Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest. And maybe I should say welcome to Cochineal Color Quest because that's all we've been working on the past few weeks. Today, I wanna to show you something really cool that was shown to me several years ago, the first time I started working with Cochineal. Check this out. Let's try to make this color today. Pretty magical to see that strong pH difference, right? So today on Color Quest, let's look at the alkaline side of our pH spectrum and see if we can't welcome that incredible fuchsia that is part of the Cochineal color family. So as you know already from a few videos here, cochineal is pH sensitive. We have managed to shift it with just a slight bit of an acidic change using cream of tartar and we got a beautiful red. Then we pushed a little more in that acidic realm. We added some citric acid and we got orange. So today we're going to move on the other side of neutral on the pH spectrum and as the alkaline side. Now I'm going to give you a fair warning. I struggled with alkaline during this video. I'm going to show you all the different steps I took to try to find that fuchsia that I showed you on the palm of my hand and don't know that I made it but it's great to share all of the experimentation and for you to know that I do a lot of trial and error over here. It's not always seamless and it doesn't always work the way I planned it. So I'm hoping that'll give you some encouragement within your own dye practice to keep exploring and put your expectations on the side. You'll be much happier. I wish I had done that. Anyway, let's jump into the alkaline side of Cochineal. So shifting to an alkaline, we have a couple of different options. We can use baking soda. That's a great one because most homes have that in your cupboard. You can use something like washing soda or soda ash, which I have typically here anyway, because you can also use that for scouring. And then you can go even to something as specific as slaked lime or calcium hydroxide. If you're a person who has indigo vats, you might have this around. It is also what's used to make your vat alkaline, so it can work here. It's pretty strong. Ammonia is another choice. I don't use ammonia in my practice, but that's a very heavy on the alkaline side. So I think today I'm going to work with the washing soda or soda ash because it will give me a nice boost into the alkaline realm. I almost forgot, you could also use calcium carbonate, which is chalk. You can also find it in your medicine cabinet as Tums. This is something that has an alkaline side as well. So if you have that around, that's another option for you to shift for alkaline. All right, fiber is prepped. That means it has been washed and it has been pre-treated with a mordant. Two different versions for wool and silk, which are protein fibers, I used alum. And for my cotton, I am using aluminum acetate. It's a finely processed version of alum and cotton prefers it. You can go back through the video library and find all kinds of information about how to mordant. There's so many different ways to do it. Just know that pre-treating with 
some kind of a Morton is going to make your life so much happier in your dye studio. So in last week's video, in order to work with a neutral cochineal, we prepared a whole new bathroom extraction process. Again, you can go back and watch that to see how I did four quick, strong heats to pull as much of that color as possible. That is then blended and I am working still today with that master dye pot. So I'll be using just some of that in today's pot in order to see if we can't shift into that more fuchsia side of the color spectrum. As always, I'm going to wet my fiber after it's been washed and treated in a mordant. If you pull it straight from the mordant and rinse it, your fiber's already wet, you can put it right into the dye pot. However, if you do all of those other processes for fiber prep and then you're starting with some dry fiber, make sure that you put it into water to soak. It just works better when the fiber is wet in the dye pot. Now, I don't have a percentage for the washing soda. I am just going to match what we did with the citric acid for the orange acidic bath and use half a teaspoon. Not sure how that's gonna work, but let's try that out first. I went through all of the steps that we've done previously in a shift on the acidic side. I added the washing soda or the alkaline right into the dye bath. I heated it up, I added the wet fiber and then let that sit on the stove for about an hour. I checked on it and I noticed that the fibers really weren't picking up any of the color. Now, obviously with cotton, sometimes it's harder for the dye to attach to cellulose, but it's rare that you can't get color to adhere to protein fibers like wool and silk. And neither one of those are picking it up. So something isn't right. So I think I'm going to check the alkaline level or the pH level. I'm concerned that using that half teaspoon actually was way too much. And I might be dealing with a dye pot now that is so far on the alkaline side that the molecules of that cochineal aren't really able to respond to the fiber or something like that. Not a scientist in any way. And that's actually less interesting to me. I just like to test stuff out and see what works. So let's test the pH. If you don't have pH strips, it might be a good thing to bring into your dye studio. I use them when I'm playing around with pH and it can give you some good information. So probably not a bad investment. They're really inexpensive and you can sometimes find a lot out about a dye pot based upon them. Let's try it out. Okay, wow, that is really alkaline. I don't typically push things way up there into the 12, 13, 14 realm. So I'm thinking that probably has something to do with what's going on. So I'm gonna do two things. One is I'm gonna start again and I'm going to use less of the washing soda, a lot less. Then I'm also going to add a little more cochineal and boost up some of that cochineal content. So we'll do a quick extraction through grinding some more of the insects and adding that to a nut milk bag, putting that in to just kick 
up the cochineal content as well. I might be working with two different issues here. One is that because I'm working from last week's dye bath, even though I pulled it separately, it's possible that it's not quite as strong. And then I added way too much washing soda. So you can also choose to use something not as strong like baking soda. Baking soda is definitely much less alkaline. So you could be using baking soda. You might even have access to that at home more readily. And then if you decide you want to increase the alkalinity, you just add a little bit more. So that might not be a bad choice when working this way. Today, since I started with washing soda, I'm going to stick with washing soda. And let's see what a little bit less of that and a little bit more of cochineal will do this time. When you first pull fiber out of the dye pot, it looks so dark and you're like, wow, look at that color until you put it underneath the faucet. Now you'll notice that a lot of the color does wash away that really rich vibrancy. And that's why we rinse our fiber after we take it out of the dye pot, because not all of the color particles are sticking to the fiber. If we've pre-treated our fiber well, then what's gonna stick is gonna stick and you're gonna get a good result. But don't be fooled by looking at the color of what comes out of the dye pot, thinking that that's what you're gonna get. Most likely some of that color will be washed away and that is just color that hasn't actually adhered to the fiber. I usually try to squeeze my fiber and get the excess back into the dye pot before I rinse it, just so that I don't rinse away any of those color particles. But it is a good practice to always rinse your fiber after you're done with the dye process itself. All right, that did make a difference. The silk and certainly the wool at least picked up a little more of the cochineal and the color is definitely different than the neutral cochineal, but it's much more of a light pink and different than I'm expecting. Hey, and that's how it goes, right? So, you know, we have time and I'm super curious. One of the ways in which I have worked with it on my own with other dye matters is create an alkaline bath, which is used as a post dip to change the color. It's one way to have a little bit more control potentially, and also you're not changing the color of the dye bath itself. So this time I'm going to dye some of the fiber directly into a neutral cochineal pot. We will get that cochineal nice and adhered to the fiber itself, and then we'll put it into an alkaline bath. See if that makes a difference. We start with a base that's stronger instead of just raw fiber. Maybe we're gonna get a stronger color. We're definitely gonna get a different color. Let's test it out.
Okay, well, I think we have a winner, at least if you're looking for a darker color. It looks like an after bath and an alkaline solution might be the way to go. Let's take a look at all three of them together. So here we have it. We have got the first attempt. I did get a little bit of color on the wool, but dang, that barely has anything on it. And I would say that the cotton even did better than the protein fibers, but it's just a very light pink. Different than our neutral, again, trying to expand our palette. This was our second attempt where we used less of the washing soda and a little bit more cochineal to the pot. And look, very pretty color, still different than expectations of fuchsia, but the silk eh, took a little bit, pretty similar. Somehow the silk just didn't like it very much. And definitely the cotton got a little bit more color in it and a different color. It's like a warmer pink. Interesting, right? But then, ta-da, here is our after bath. We definitely got the more fuchsia color similar to what I had on my hand and really dark. So you can see the silk and then the cotton. Now, I thought I would put it next to the neutral so you can see that there is a difference between what we started with before we put it into the alkaline bath and after. So I think the strongest difference that's visible really is with the wool. Wool is always doing incredible things. The silk, we also had definitely a shift in color. This one has more of that fuchsia tone. And then our two differences in terms of the cotton, this one's slightly darker and it's a little bit more muted of a color than this more vibrant pink of neutral. So friends, there you have it. Alkaline shifted cochineal so many different colors and wow so much experimentation amazing well i will say that in my own practice i really tend to use an after bath to do shifts because i like to save the dyes color that i start with if I put the modifier right into the dye, that automatically changes everything. It's still a wonderful way to go, but the more I shift my colors in my own practice, the more I'm finding that I like the control of using an after bath to change the colors right on the fiber itself. Look what we did today. All gorgeous colors though, just very, very different. And the coach nail definitely enjoyed adhering to that fiber first before you modified it. Interesting, because maybe you'd want to go back and do the same thing on the acidic side. You're definitely going to get a different result. And who knows, maybe you'll enjoy doing it that way better as well. So next week on Color Quest, are you getting sick of coach nail yet? Well, let me tell you almost done. There is one more experiment I'd like to try to take us even further down the color spectrum, and that is to see if we can't welcome some purple into the cochineal color spectrum. And we're going to do that with the help of iron, one of my favorite modifiers of all time. You'll have to come back next week and see what happens. I think we'll try both an in the pot and an after iron bath. See what kind of differences we get considering how different they were today. Have a great week and I can't wait to see you next Friday here on Color Quest. Watch this. Can't I get it on there? <laughs>